Okay, so in this video, I told you why Webflow is good for some things and then not so good for other things. And then Webflow Conference dropped, which changed a lot about what I said in that first video. So let's go over those things and paint a new picture of why Webflow is actually pretty damn awesome now. Now, I still think Webflow shines as a marketing website tool. I really, I doubled down and I'm digging my heels in that it's not very good for building web applications. Using tools like Wiz, I'll say it again, they are very clever utilizations of the Webflow platform, but it just does not have the security needed to build a website application. If you're exporting the code or if you're using something like DevLink and then re-importing that into like a Next or React project, next or, or react or something like this then it becomes a bit more interesting but i really don't think it's suitable for a web application similarly e-commerce i think that's totally dead in the water at least in the short term i don't think you'll see any updates for e-commerce so e-commerce websites avoid now the other two main areas which i said it does not suit in is uh, enterprise and european websites the two latest updates to webflow changes a lot with regards to that. The enterprise stuff is a bit of a tricky one to describe. First of all, I said that the nested uh, collection list limits really limit the ability to build an expansive enterprise level website. Now they've adjusted those limits, they haven't given us numbers and they haven't given us timelines, but they will be increasing those limits. It's yet to be seen whether this changes the game with regards to enterprise level websites, but it does open up a lot more doors when it comes to bigger companies using their website, their marketing website for listing websites, for search, a more comprehensive marketing website. Although I'm not quite there and totally retracting my statement, it does open up those doors, particularly as now the languages, they've increased the number of languages you can have. They've allowed that across the board of the uh, of all the plans, which w it was once only available for enterprise. And now with the built-in marketing tools, it starts to become a lot more useful as, a, as an all-in-one enterprise level website. The only downside with all of this all-in-one solution, which someone needs to do it, it's not like it's a good thing or a bad thing apple does it where they just try and keep you in and they just give you everything that you need and popular features or popular apps they adopt into their platform you are paying the extra for that privilege so it is a more expensive option if enterprise are willing to swallow those costs free of the headache of maintaining infrastructure managing a variety of different tools and platforms in order to integrate with the website then it starts to become a more viable solution the other big area which contradicts what i thought web wasn't good for is European websites. Again, we still don't have concrete knowledge on this, but the new AI integrations, are called, I think they call it Analyze, forgotten what the other one was called, analytical system behind Webflow is now able to collect data on request of the of the user. You know, if you're not in the EU, then you can just collect data without consent. There's there's two other uh, options. One is just don't collect data, and the other one is collect with permission. Now, then, with that option, as far as I'm aware, you need to build a solution that integrates with the Webflow API to kind of trigger that system now there are two platforms i know finsuite is one of them their cookie consent module that, that integrates already with that platform and you can go and buy that that's totally fine webflow in their faq section have confirmed that they anonymize the data which is good but they also don't provide their own cookie consent module so you'll need to build that yourself i will be for sure doing a tutorial on how to build that yourself so subscribe for that one but ultimately this means that there is no data collected unless the user specifies now the gray area when it comes to all this is where is that data stored now europe want your data stored in a sort of either in europe or a valid verified or validated uh, system and i think there's where this the treaty comes in with the us i don't know i think that treaty is agreed upon and that's what makes it gdpr compliant i really want webflow just to say the words gdpr compliant they seem to be avoiding that term but i i i sort of don't blame them because 
it's like well, you don't want to kind of open up a can of worms. You want people to verify this themselves and, and whatever. The other aspect is the new forms that they've released. Now, you can natively integrate your own form system without having to write JavaScript. Now, I have a video on that if you still want an Ajax call, you know, you want to send your data to another platform and not into Webflow because the idea is if you're storing if you're using Webflow native forms, you're storing that per potentially personal data inside of Webflow's database. Now they've got a new system as far as I can see where you can use a plugin of some sort to bypass all of that and send it to your own sort of database. So with these two things combined, this starts to make it a very much more European friendly website. As Webflow have been doing, as I will always do, Always do your due diligence. If GDPR compliance is massive to you, then absolutely hire a lawyer. But at least I'm here to tell you that Webflow is somewhat more compliant now with these new features. And the last one, which was a shock to everyone, which again, is yet to be seen how they do it. I've said this to Matthew Munger, that the biggest, the, my biggest video to date, which is I've done with Webflow, talks about how the interactions panel is not accessible and it's encouraging people to build non-accessible interactive websites. GSAP being acquired and GSAP enabling the user to be able to toggle HTML attributes, if Webflow can give a UI or some solid documentation on how to trigger or change HTML attributes, then this means the interactions panel may very well be accessibility compliant. Once again, it will take it will be up to the developer as always to implement all of this stuff. So that is a brief overview of how I'm sort of retracting my statements made in my earlier video. Plus, I really wanted to do a new kind of roundup video of what Webflow is good for and what it's not so good for. That's titled a bit more friendly because if you watch this video, I sort of explained that I'm uh, kind of reshaping my um, the outward perception that I have with Webflow. So this is in aid of that. And I made another video which goes through where Webflow sits in with in the business journey of a client, which I still think stands true. Webflow have broadened that a little bit. And, and again, it starts to be more viable when it comes to uh, enterprise and things like this. But I think it's worth watching that video and help use this video and that video to kind of come to a conclusion on whether Webflow is a suitable solution for you. So that'll do it. Go over to my Patreon where you can subscribe for as little as $5 a month, I think it is, where I do early releases and extended director's cut releases, maybe including this one, and it helps just support me and the channel whilst I make this content. Anyway, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, happy no coding.